7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. What the? What the? After losing the debate to the KKK, Michael went to school. Just being a preacher in general is not a job for sissies. Uh, you have to have thick skin. You have to be ready to be uh, scrutinized on all points. Uh, you know, that's, that's one of the things that I believe that they were really trying to help us with, you know, in the school that I was attending was that some of the instructors, they would, you know, they would kind of pick out some guys and they would just be really hard on them for a certain amount of time. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. Real Local, WGSR 47.1 in high definition. What the? What the? After losing the debate to the KKK, Michael went to school. Just being a preacher in general is not a job for sissies. Uh, you have to have thick skin. You have to be ready to be uh, scrutinized on all points. Uh, you know, that's, that's one of the things that I believe that they were really trying to help us with, you know, in the school that I was attending, was that some of the instructors, they would, you know, they would kind of pick out some guys and they would just be really hard on them for a certain amount of time. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible but only getting babble? Are you tired of this commercial? <laughs> so am I. Well, these commercials may be old and boring, but the gospel we preach never is. Come study the Bible with the Church of Christ. We're meeting at 250 the Boulevard. Our new times are Sundays at 9 a.m. for Bible study and 10 a.m. for worship, and then Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Come visit with us. We hope to see you there. In the Church of Christ, we teach that the Bible teaches that we can intermarry and we, therefore we will intermingle. We'll also have a very diverse future. When I first heard about the Church of Christ and what they were teaching, they made me believe that they were actually teaching the truth. And if you're teaching the truth, there should not be an issue with black or white. So I decided to visit here and that's when I realized that they are teaching the truth and black or white regardless of what your nationality is, it's not an issue. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. What the? What the? After losing the debate to the KKK, Michael went to school. Just being a preacher in general is not a job for sissies. Uh, you have to have thick skin. You have to be ready to be uh, scrutinized on all points. Uh, you know, that's, that's one of the things that I believe that they were really trying to help us with, you know, in the school that I was attending, was that some of the instructors, they would, you know, they would kind of pick out some guys and they would just be really hard on them for a certain amount of time. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to A Word from the Lord. James over here with you, and we are glad that you are ready to study God's Word with us. Uh, tonight's uh, lesson is going to be a continuation of what we did last week. Uh, we're going to talk about more uh, about the Godhead. That was a... Uh, uh, Interesting topic, and we had a lot of individuals that are calling, wanting DVDs of it, and so uh, there's more. The Bible has more to say about that particular uh, topic than just what you can get in one uh, hour's lesson. So I said, well, you know what, we'll just go ahead and we'll do some more. And so I hope that the, uh, the, the individual that asked the question, that really got it all started, I hope they're watching. I hope they're getting going to get something some more out of this. Uh, actually, we're going to talk about... Uh, a, a particular call that came in last week. We're not going to play the call, but uh, a call came in, and we'll, we'll address that, and uh, as well as some calls that we had in the past on this subject. And so I uh, hope you are ready for a study of, uh, of uh, about more than the Godhead tonight. And we'll get into that in just a moment. I want to give you our contact information. Here's how you can reach me, James Oldfield, 276-340-2653, or you can uh, reach me at 250 the Boulevard, there in Eden, North Carolina, 27288. Uh, that's where we meet on Sundays at uh, 
uh, 9 a.m. for Bible class, 10 a.m. for worship, and then we have Bible study at 7 p.m. on Thursday nights. Of course, then the Word from the Lord comes on uh, thir- uh, Thursday nights at 9 o'clock right here. You're watching us now. Uh, Word from the Lord at gmail.com is where you can reach me. If you're in the Martinsville or Danville area, you can call Micah or Eugene. Uh, if you're in, in the Martinsville, 823 Starting Avenue is where they meet. They meet Sundays at 9, 10, and 11 on Sunday morning, and Wednesday night, they have their Bible study at 7 p.m. Uh, Tuesday nights in Danville is 120 American Legion in Danville. Mark's phone number is uh, there on the screen, uh, 434-770-8412. believe that's right. And so um, uh, all kinds of ways you can reach members for the Church of Christ. As a matter of fact, talk to a lady just on my way down here tonight. She, she talked to Johnny. She talked to Eugene. She talked to uh, Micah. Or she's trying to talk to Johnny. She uh, talked to Mike. She talked to Eugene. Talked to me. And I think maybe we've talked before. But and she's in Ohio, so I know she's watching the program. Uh, you know, she's watching our programs either on YouTube, uh, which uh, we're trying to get that up and running uh, with uh, frequency and a little smoothly. So if those of you watching on YouTube and uh, UStream or Star News or however you might be watching us, if you're getting our DVDs, you're watching us later online. We appreciate that. We appreciate all the information and all the. The encouragement that you're getting, and for those of you who are watching, especially outside the immediate area, we really appreciate that very thing. So, tonight we will get started on this on this topic, uh, more about the Godhead, by uh, playing you some video clips from the past. Now, one, uh, these two of these individual, two of these clips have to do with uh, a, a gentleman that actually came on and was we had a, a, a debate uh, with Mr. Marty Roberts twice, and he was supposed to come back on the third time. As you will see in this video clip that's immediately behind me, uh, you'll hear him, you'll see him nod and acknowledge that we're going to have another discussion. Uh, but uh, he moved out of town, decided not to come back, So, uh, uh, which I think he, last time I checked, he was in Kernersville. That's not that far away. Uh, we'd be glad to have anybody who knows Marty Roberts. He was preaching up in Mayadan. Uh, be glad to uh, have him back on, and we'll finish it. We'll, finish this topic. We'll actually discuss this topic uh, that we're discussing tonight uh, in more detail, if you will. But listen to listen to why we need to talk about this. Because there's a lot of confusion about the Godhead, the Trinity. Uh, someone said, well, the word Trinity is not in the Bible. Well, okay. It, it, the, the word Trinity may not be in the Bible, but there is the concept there. And so that is certainly um, uh, uh, worth, uh, worth studying. And it's worth something to believe in. Most people believe in rapture, and the word rapture is not in the Bible. So, uh, so there you have that. But, but listen to, to the, the conversations that are had, and uh, then we'll proceed from here. Well, see, the reason why James does that is because he don't, he don't preach the name of Jesus. He don't want to say it because he believes in the doctrine of the Trinity. He believes in the doctrine of the Trinity. Well, see, the reason why James does that is because he don't he don't preach the name of Jesus. He don't want to say it because he believes in the doctrine of the Trinity. 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 All right, so I believe the doctrine of the Trinity is what Marty's saying there. Well, Marty believes that there's only one person in the Godhead. Now, listen, both of us cannot be right. Say whatever we're saying here. People say, well, you know, if, if, as long as you believe in God, you're fine. Well, but wait a minute. What, what do you believe about God? Do you believe that there's only one person in the Godhead and somebody else believes there's three person, persons in the Godhead? Can we both be right? Is that okay to believe something about God that's not true? So I say, no, it's not all right. We need to figure out what the Bible's actually saying and reject what, what uh, uh, it doesn't say and let's get back to doing what it actually teaches. So, so here's Marty Roberts. You know, uh, well, I, James believes in the Trinity. That's why he doesn't say in the name of Jesus. I, I'll say in the name of Jesus. I, I'll, I'll preach in the name of Jesus because I know that means the authority of Christ. But see, this is why we need to have discussions like this because we were having a discussion on what do you say when you baptize, and this gentleman calls in, and he makes this comment. See, and while you're talking about one to- topic, sometimes you inadvertently you get into another topic like 
how many persons in the Godhead, and this causes confusion. So we need to we need to line that confusion out. This is what this caller says. Yes, sir. I was just wondering if you guys could take a minute to explain the Godhead to me. Um, <laughs> you, you've got me more confused now than when I started watching it. Um, I was under the impression three separate entities all in one, Jeez. and the way the other fellow explained it was one entity. Entity, and you know I don't see how. God could send his self to be his son. I mean, you guys got me more confused now than ever. Well, we've got about we've got about a, probably two minutes maybe. Can can we say this, caller? Can we say we have been discussing possibly coming back and having a debate on that very subject? So can we just can we table your question for a moment and and come back and do a whole another lesson on that? I sure hope so, and I hope it's a less confusing one. All right, all right. Thanks. Well, all right, so he, he, the caller one has come back and actually addressed this subject. See, we're talking about another subject. And so in passing, we talk about, like Marty said, well, James believed in the Trinity. Well, that caused a red flag to come up in somebody's mind. So wait, 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 wait a minute. Well, what do you mean, the Trinity? I, I thought there was three persons in the Godhead. You're saying there's one? We need to have this discussion. So if there's an apostolic uh, preacher, Pentecostal preacher, uh, someone that believes in uh, one person in the Godhead, maybe you want to step up and take Marty's place, and we'll have this discussion too. But in the meantime, in the meantime, what we have to do is then we have to just kind of uh, put a straw man up here. Not just a straw man, but we have to just uh, debate an empty chair, and uh, let's find out what the Bible says about about the Godhead. Now, listen, the Godhead. We're talking about the unity of the Godhead. Now, when you say the Godhead, last week we talked about the the deity, the divine nature. That's what you say. When you say God, these people, these uh, persons are God, then you're saying they are, they are divine. They are deity. They have a divine nature. But when you say three persons in one, you know, that may not make, make sense to some. Well, how, how does that work? How, how do you have three persons in one? You know, well, let's just see. How is it that God is plural but singular at the same time. There's one God, but yet there's three. That, that's confusing. Okay, that's why we need to study it. So let's look at this. Let's talk about God. Let's talk about God is one. Now, all through the Bible, that, that is referenced, all right? That is, that is the concept that said that God is one. Let's just look at, let's look at uh, some of these uh, scriptures here. And just to show you what we're talking about, uh, Isaiah... 43 and verse 10. And notice notice in this text, notice in this text, you're going to see something uh, uh, in nearly all of these texts. We're going to see a contrast here. Isaiah 43, 10. Uh, Isaiah says, Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that I may, uh, that ye may know and believe me, that you may lo and believe me and understand that I am uh, I am he. Before, before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. All right? So I, I'm, I'm by myself is what, what God says, what Isaiah says. Now look at verse 11. And I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no God. Savior. All right. Thank you, Mark. All right. So beside me, there's no Savior. I, I, I'm the only one. There's no other. Now, what, is, what is, is God talking about there? Well, in all these passages, I'll just go ahead and tell you, excuse me. In all these passages, what you'll notice is Isaiah, God, through the mouth of Isaiah, is comparing the true and living God with idols. All right, notice, thus saith the Lord, the King of, of, of Israel, and his, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, I am the last, and beside me there is no God. All right, there's no God. And who as I, and who as I shall uh, call and shall declare it and set in order for me since I appointed the ancient people and the things, <clears throat> excuse me, and the things that are coming and shall come, let them show unto them. Verse 8. Fear ye not, 
Neither be afraid, have not I told thee from that time, and have declared it, ye are my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Is there a God beside me? No, there's not. Yea, there is no God. I know not any. I don't know any other God besides the true and living God. All right, verse 9. They that make a graven image. Now, you see the contrast here? They that make a graven image are all of them vanity, and their delectable things shall not profit. They are their own uh, witnesses. They see not, nor know, that they may be ashamed. All right, so the contrast that's being made here between God and the, uh, uh, the, uh, God and the other gods <clears throat> is the fact that God, the true and living God, is a, is a real God as opposed to one that's, that's made or graven uh, by the hands of men. Let's look at one more. Isaiah 45 and verse 5. Isaiah 45 verse 5. I am the Lord and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. All right? Isaiah 45 and verse 5. Now, so we're talking about we're talking about God comparing to false gods. Now that's the same principle that you find when Paul says in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 4. Now look at this. When Paul says, concerning therefore the eating of things which are offered to sacrifice, uh, that are offered in sacrifice to idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world and that there is none other God but one. What do you mean there's no other God but one? As opposed to all of the other idols of the world, these graven images, they are not real gods. All right? So compared to the true and living God, there's only one. There's only one deity. There's only one uh, uh, deity or divine nature. Whoop, sorry about that. All right? 1 Corinthians, let me get back here. 1 Corinthians 8 and verse 5. <clears throat> here we go, next verse. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as there be gods many and lords many, to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom uh, the Father of whom all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. Now we may come back to this verse. But you see here, Paul is contrasting one God with, with idols. Now, let me just show you, let me just show you a contrast why Isaiah and all the prophets would talk about there being one God. God is one, God is one, God is one. Because the mentality that you saw back in the Old Testament and even prevailing in the New Testament, you found Paul in Acts 17 going into Athens and he found an altar to all these gods. He said, you're very superstitious. And he said, when I was passing by all your devotions, I found an, an altar with the inscription to the unknown God. So they had all these different deities. And he said, but there's one that you don't know. And so it is needful for me to tell you about the one that you don't know. He says, you actually said you're ignorant. Now, some people would say, well, you know, you shouldn't tell people that they're ignorant. You shouldn't tell people that they're wrong. That they're, that, they're, that they're off the track if they're worshiping God. Well, these folks were worshiping the true and living God even though they didn't know him. They were worshiping him in ignorance, Paul said. Paul says, no, we need to set it straight. These other gods that you're worshiping are not right. So we need to talk about the one and true God that, that is right. And so the mindset is that the, the more powerful God, the more powerful God was the one that was actually true. First Kings uh, 1 Kings chapter 20 and verse 22. <clears throat> Notice this. And the prophet came to the king of Israel and said to him, Go, strengthen thyself and mark, and see that thou doest. For in the return of the year, the king of Syria, the king of Syria will uh, come again against thee. Uh, verse, uh, verse 23. And, uh, and the servants of the king of Syria said unto him, Their gods are gods of the hills. Therefore they were stronger than we, but let us fight them in the, in the plain, and surely, and surely we shall be stronger than they. See, their mindset was every, every nation had their own gods, and the stronger God would always prevail. 
All right, now let's come on down to verse 28 because this is what they're going to say. They're saying, well, their God's stronger than ours because we fought them on his turf. So what we need to do is fight them on our turf and our God will be victorious. <clears throat> and there came a man of God, this is verse 28, 1 Kings 20, 28. And there came a man of God and spake unto the king of Israel and said, Thus saith the Lord, because the Syrians have said, The Lord is God of the hills, but he is not God of the valleys. Therefore will I deliver this great multitude in thine hand, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. All right? He is the only deity. He is the only true God. All right? So that's why, that's why all the prophets would say, that there's only one God, that God is one, because uh, in comparison to all these other false gods, he is the only true deity. He's the only one who truly possesses this divine nature. These others don't. Now someone says, <clears throat> well, what about this? What about John 10 verse 30? Jesus said, I and my Father are one. And therefore, Jesus and God must be one person. All right, They're, they got to be one and the same individual because there's only one person. All right, there's the I and I, uh, uh, the, my father and I are one. Well, friends, is that really saying that they're one person? Is that really what that what's that saying? Because notice, notice the uh, uh, the language that that the Bible uses in uh, Matthew. Chapter 19, and we're going to look at verse uh, 19. Matthew chapter 19 and verse uh, 3. I guess we'll start here. <clears throat> no, let's see. Verse, uh, verse 4. Jesus said, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And for this cause shall a man leave father and mother, shall cleave to his wife, and they twain? shall be one flesh. Now you mean to tell me that when a man and woman get married, that all of a sudden they become one person? They become one personality? They become one entity? There is no distinction between the two? You know? You mean to tell me that they're, they're, they're still not two different persons? Hmm. No, that's not what it's saying. You recognize that they are still two people, but they have joined for one purpose and one goal. All right? That's why Paul's going to say in Ephesians chapter 5 that a, that a husband should love his wife as his own body. All right? So you, you care for that person because now you are one in, in, in purpose and in goal, but not... One completely individual. You didn't. One person didn't absorb the other. This is not like uh, some Star Trek, you know, Borg, where everybody assimilates and you become one big machine. That's not what we're talking about. They're still individuals, but yet they're one in purpose. That's what Jesus is saying. That's what Jesus is saying. Notice this in uh, when he says, "My Father and I are one." In John fourteen and verse thirty-four, I believe it is. Uh, no, not uh, John 14. Let me, let me think here. John 4 and verse 34. All right, Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Now, there's where they were unified. They were unified in the mission, in the goal. That's where they said that we're one. All right? And so that's how you have unity amongst two different Individuals, two different uh, persons, if you will. Now, so when the Bible says God is one, God is one, then how is that? How is that possible? That there are three different persons who then are God. If God is one, how can God be plural at the same time? How can there be persons uh, in deity who are deity? Well, that's what you need to realize. When you're talking about deity, when you say God, they are God, that means you're saying they are deity. They possess this divine nature. Okay? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all deity. They are all divine. And therefore, there is only one God, one divine nature. 
but there are three persons who possess that divine nature. That's what we talked about last week. Now, consider, consider this. How is it that we're going to prove that God is uh, what he is like? How are we going to demonstrate that? How is, or how is God going to do that? Well, let's look at this. How does God prove what he's like? In Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 and 5, now, this is, a, this is a typical verse that, that individuals use who, who want to say, well, there's only one person in the Godhead. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. All right? Well, that doesn't mean that there's only one person. Remember, we're talking about there's unity in being one. But that doesn't mean that you still can't have plurality in one. Right? There are many members in the body of Christ, but yet there's only one body. Matthew, tw uh, Romans 12, 4 and 5. Now, let's look at this word Elohim here. Now, this, let's, look, let's look at this word. What does that mean? Well, Elohim means, it's a plural word. And it means God in an ordinary sense, but specifically it's used in the plural, especially when you're talking about the supreme God. All right? Now, wait a minute. You can have a singular plural. You can have a God at the same time that is plural. That's exactly right. Because you can have a one divine nature, yet you can have individuals, more than one individuals, that possesses that divine nature. Now, how are we going to demonstrate that? Well, stay with me here. Why would God use a plural word if God is only one person? If deity, the divine nature, was only uh, possessed by one person or personality, then how? Then why would you use a plural word? Well, let's look at this. Consider in Genesis 1, 26. Genesis 1 and verse 26. When God made man, God said, let us make man in our own image, in our image, in our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over... over uh, Every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth. Let us make man our own image. Now, who is us? Now, if any of you out there watching, like, like Lord of the Rings, the, the movie Lord of the Rings or the, or the book, uh, I, 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 like, I like Tolkien's books. I like those uh, uh, Lord of the Rings series. Well, you know, there's, there's a creature in there named Gollum, and he talks to him. He's got a split personality, and he always talks about himself as us. Now, is that what you're saying God's like? Is God like Gollum or in The Hobbit? Is he, is he like uh, Smeagol that rock, walks around and saying, let us, let us? Is that really who you think God is? Or could it be, long shot here maybe, but could it be that there's more than one person in God so that the 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 God, the divine nature, the deity, the Godhead can say let us? You know, if you said, let me give you this illustration. If you said the school board, the school board voted, or the city council voted, all right? How many, how many city councils are there? Just one. Just one council. How many school board is there? Just one. Talking about if you're talking about this particular school board. Talking about the city of, of Regional, the city of Eden. How many how, uh, uh, how many city uh, um, councils are there? There's just one. So if you read in the paper, the the city council singular voted by saying. We are going to pass this bill. Now wait, how does one say we? 
because there are many individuals that make up this one particular entity. And so God is singular, singular divine nature, but three persons possess possess this. That's why, <clears throat> that's why he said, let us make man in our own image. But notice this. In Genesis 2.18, Genesis 2.18, the Bible said, the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help made for him. Now why is I used? Why is the singular used? Because the individuals, the persons within the Godhead who all possess the divine nature are one, are unified in creating man. Therefore, I, I will make him a help me. All right? So you can have a singular God, and yet at the same time, there be plural personalities that possess that divine nature. All right? So this must be because God is plural and, and consists in three different persons who at the same time are one because they all possess the same nature and they're all focused on the same goal. This shows the unity of God. Now, individuals who believe in the one in the Godhead, that's only one person in the Godhead, they're going to miss this. They cannot explain or they have a hard time dealing with this because they don't want to admit that there can be more than one personality that all possesses this divine nature. But I'm going to show you this. You know, if you have personalities, and, and that we're going to be, go through a lot of scriptures here, but if you, if you talk about the Bible, and you talk about individuals that have personalities, you, you can tell different personalities in the Bible. Peter, Peter has a totally different personality than, say, Paul or, or John. You know, you, you, can just, you can read their writings. You read, These are different people. Just the way they wrote. Jeremiah is a weeping prophet, you know. Uh, I, I, lo I like Jeremiah. I love Jeremiah. I, you read Jeremiah, you read Amos, you read some of these these uh, uh, prophets, and you say, you know what? They're, they're totally different people. You can see their personality. Why? Because they have different traits, yet they're still people, right? They all possess the same humanity. So it is with God. God is singular in a divine nature, but yet there are three persons that can make up or that can possess this divine nature, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, we're going to look at these one at a time. Now, I'm not saying that there are three gods, mind you. There's only one God, one deity, one divine nature, yet there are three persons who possess that divine nature. And I'm going to show you the, uh, this difference here. We're talking about the personalities of the Godhead. Now, here's the Father. Now, the Bible says that the Father, as the Father, He has a will. He has a will. Matthew 7, uh, 21 Matthew 7, verse 21, the Father, he has a will. Not everyone that saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So the Father has a will. The Father speaks. Matthew 3 and verse 17. We're going to look at this verse later if we get to it. And lo, there uh, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved Son, whom I'm well pleased. So we know he speaks. He can speak. The Father works. And I'm just I'm just going through a a really a short verse a short list excuse me of of verses that will indicate to any uh, you know basic Bible student if you're if you're studying the Bible you're going to realize that the Father is is a different personality he's a different uh, entity from the Son or the Holy Spirit because he does different things now look at this he uh, um, or with John 5, 17, Jesus said unto them, My Father worketh here too, and I work. So the Father works. He knows. He has knowledge. Mark chapter 13 and verse 32. Look at this. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, not in the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Now if there are two different individuals, friends, how is it, or if there, I mean if they're one individual, 
If they're the same, how does the son know something that the father doesn't if they're the same? Is it possible for me to know something that I don't know? You know? Now, I may know that I don't know it. I may know what it is. But I can't know something and at the same time not know it. The son and the father are two different personalities. All right? Notice this in Matthew chapter 6 and verse uh, 6. The father sees. Jesus said, But when thou press, enter into thy closet. And when thou shut the door, pray to thy father which is in secret. And thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Now, if they were the same individual, Jesus would say, enter your closet, shut the door, and when you pray to me, then I will, will uh, 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 I'll see you in secret, and then I'll reward you openly. By the way, tonight we studied uh, in Matthew chapter uh, 6, and uh, we were talking about the, the model prayer. Let's just look at this. After this manner... Jesus tells them to pray. Now, why didn't he say, pray after this manner? Therefore, pray. Our me. Or, or, you know, what, what? They didn't call Jesus Father. Why didn't he say, pray to me? Which art in heaven? How to be my name? My kingdom come. My will be done on earth as in heaven. See, see, friends, it just, it's just absurd to say that these two uh, distinct personalities are, are actually the same. He hears, the Father hears, in uh, uh, John chapter 11 and verse 41. John 11 41, they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Now see how absurd this is, friends. When you're going through these verses where Jesus is actually talking to the Father, if you believe that there's only one person in the Godhead, you have to explain why is it that Jesus is talking to himself in the third person. Why is he doing this? Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Myself, I thank myself that I have heard myself. You see, friends, this the Father is different than the Son. The Father teaches, John 8, 28. <clears throat> the Father reveals, Mark 16, 17. And that's different than what, that's a different personality. He has, dis, he has distinctive qualities of an individual. That's what a personality is. And thus the Son has some distinctive personalities as well. Notice, He has a will. He has His own will. John 5, verse 21. Let's look at this. We just, we just read this verse, John 5, 21. For as my father raised up from the dead and quickeneth him, even so the son quickeneth whom he will. Did not Jesus pray in the garden that he wanted this cup to pass from him? But what did he say? Not my will, but thy will. Well, if they had the same will, why didn't he just say, well, let not my will be done, but let my will be done? See, friends, this is just silliness going to seed, really, when you start saying there's only one person in the Godhead. Now, you may not understand how three persons can be one, or you may not understand how, uh, how all that works, but you know what? It makes sense that it does work this way. It just doesn't make sense that it works the other way. The Bible is clearly telling us, giving us information to show that these individuals are different and distinct. And you may not understand how how it all comes together. But you have to realize that this is the right way. See that? I don't know how a car engine works, but I know this. I'm glad it does. I'm glad it does. So notice this. In, uh, uh, let's look at uh, John 5 and verse 17. Let's just back up a few verses here. This is the verse we read a little bit ago. Jesus answered and said, My Father worketh here too, and I work. So the son, he's working. He's doing some, he's doing some of his own works. <clears throat> um, John 8 and verse 18. I'm trying to skip some of these because I know we're going to, there's a lot of verses we're getting to and I want to 
give us time, but go ahead and put the phone numbers up if you would, Matt. Uh, I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. You see this? So we're talking about different, distinct characteristics that make them different personalities, yet they both possess this divine nature. All right? The Son judges. The Son judges. The Son reveals. John 10, verse 22. And the same thing can be said about the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit has his own set of distinct personalities, distinct characteristics that make him an individual. Now, when you look at what the Bible says, the Bible shows that the, that the Holy Spirit has a will. 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 11. 1 Corinthians uh, 12 and verse 11. You see this? All these work with one and the self-same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. The Holy Spirit testifies. John 15, 26. When the Comforter has come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Now, if the Spirit is the same as the Son and the same as the Father, then He's not really testifying of someone else. He's testifying of Himself. And again, you can take these verses and say, you know, when I am come, whom I will send unto you from myself, then myself, which proceedeth from myself, shall testify of me. See how silly that is? Three distinct personalities that have their own distinct characteristics as individuals, yet they all possess this same divine nature. The Holy Spirit is said to have knowledge. It knows the, the, what, what's uh, in the, the mind of God. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 10 and 11. Uh, it appoints. The Holy Spirit, I said it, the, the Holy Spirit, He appoints. Uh, Acts 20, verse 28. He bears witness. He, he uh Romans 8, 16, the Holy Spirit teaches, John 14, 26. And like I said, this is just a short verse, a short list, I mean, of, of verses, a short list of verses that talk about the distinct characteristics, the distinct characteristics of three individuals that possess the divine nature called God. By the way, let's look at first. Timothy 4, 1 Timothy 4 and verse 1. The Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now, I would say one of the things that the Spirit talks about, clearly, through the inspired word that he has, that he has uh, inspired men to write, is he talks about people who will lay, lead people away with doctrines such as one in the Godhead. Because he clearly speaks about the distinctions between the Father, the Son, and himself. And yet men come along and say, no, there's just one. And so the, the Spirit is actually talking about the very doctrine that that maligns his nature. That takes away his, his personalities. Now, how, how, how do we know that these are different individuals? How, how do we know that these are different individuals? Listen, friends, you can do a simple uh, test in some of these verses and you can figure out pretty quickly that there are distinctions between the Father and the Son and the Spirit. For example, look at this. In 2 John, 2 John and verse 9. Now, don't ask me what chapter. Just, just, uh, just one chapter, just a very, very short book, <clears throat> about 13 verses, I believe. 2 John, verse 9. Notice this. John says, Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, uh, hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath, now watch that word, he hath both 
the Father and the Son. Now, friend, you have to have two to have both. You have to have two. How can you have both if they're just one? How, how can you have both? How can you have two? See that? So, what you need to realize is, you need to realize is, yes, there's, um, there's d distinctions. There's distinctions in the... Uh, uh, the Godhead. There are some distinctions that, that are made that the Bible clearly tells us and clearly shows us that, that they're different, but yet they both possess, they both possess this divine, uh, this divine nature. They both possess this uh, divine characteristic, okay? Uh, now, I want you to consider, get back here to my slides here. Let's just consider, if you will, I'll go and put this up, Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. And like I said, friends, you just need to, you need to uh, take the time and as you're reading through these, these verses, if you think that there's only one person in the Godhead when the Bible says God is one, stop and say, well, if there's only one personality that possesses this divine nature, then how is this possible? I think the first problem that people have is don't, not realizing that when the Bible talks about God being one, they're talking about a divine nature and that it is unified amongst the persons that are, that are within it. The persons that possess a divine nature are unified. So if you recognize that God is referring to deity, a divine nature, that's going to be your be the biggest hurdle uh, getting on down the line, you know, overcoming the rest of them. If you realize you're talking about a divine nature, then it's easy to say, okay, the Father possesses a divine nature, the Son possesses a divine nature, and the Holy Spirit possesses the same divine nature. And they're all working uh, unified in unity to accomplish a desired goal. Therefore, they are one. And they're one in the sense of their, their, their goal, and they're one in the sense of there's none other, there's none other divine nature like them, like, like the one that they possess. All right? But now look, Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. Uh, here's why we're, we're showing this verse. This is one of the, the easiest thing uh, of verses to show the... the, the uh, silliness, if you will, of the uh, one and the God. Now, I'm not saying that uh, maliciously. You know, people don't take that wrong. But look at this. In Matthew 3 and verse 16, here's how we know that these individuals are different. Because if you look at this verse, you're going to have the three persons we're talking about all in the same verse. All right? All in the same verse. All in the same room, really, if you, if you want to talk about it like that. Matthew 3, 16 and 17. Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him, upon him. And a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. Now let's look at that picture here. You've got Jesus coming up out of the water. You've got the Spirit descending like a dove. And you've got a voice coming from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son. There are three personalities present in that verse, in those two verses. Now, here's your options. Either you have three distinct persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you got the Father in heaven, the Son coming up by the water, and the Spirit descending like a dove and lighting up on him. Or you could have each of those individuals being one third God. You know, now he's divided into three persons, or three or one third, you know, he's only one third deity. And so now we've we've chopped him up, I guess. 
or you have a very, very good act by Jesus, you might say he's a magician and a ventriloquist. Because while he is coming up out of the water, he's actually descending upon himself and then throwing his voice so that it sounds like it's coming out of heaven. Now, friends, let's just be really, really uh, frank with each other. Which one makes sense? Are you really saying Jesus is a ventriloquist? You really saying Jesus is throwing his voice and he's making people think that he's talking, that he's up in heaven, that there's that there's another person up in heaven speaking when really he's he's the one speaking? Is that really what we're talking about? Are we really going to, to go that far? See that? <clears throat> and so my my whole point in, in showing all this is, is clear that the Bible talks about these three persons that possess a divine nature. Therefore, they are all deity. They're all one. In the sense of they possess that divine nature, but yet they're still distinct individuals. They're still distinct individuals. Now, see, there are some problems that, that this, uh, this doctrine possesses. See, it actually makes it actually creates some problems. Uh, let's look uh, at um, John. Let's see here. John 14. And uh, let's see here. John 14, 16. That's what I meant to type in there. John 14, 16. All right. Now notice this. Jesus says, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Now, if we're not talking about three distinct persons, we've really got a problem in this verse too. I will pray to myself, and, he shall, and I will give you another comforter. Now, here's the problem, friends. When Jesus says that another comforter is going to come, that means it's going to be a comforter that's different from him. Now, if the Holy Spirit is really Jesus, then you've got Jesus saying that I'm going to be something totally different. So how can the, the Holy Spirit be different and at the same time be the same? If it's another comforter, if it's a different kind of comforter that Jesus is going to be sending, then you have to say that this comforter is different from Jesus. Now, at least you've got two. And the fact that Jesus identifies the Father and the comforter, now you've got three persons in this verse. Now, who are they? See that? Now, see, I, I would really like to hear um, someone in the, in the, in the Pentecostal uh, church that believes in one of the Godhead to answer this. See, I hope the Holy Spirit's a different, a different comforter, another comforter. Look at John, uh, let's see, John uh, 16 and verse 7. John 16, verse 7. All right. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Well, if the Comforter was the same as Jesus, because one in the Godhead means they're all the same, then why did Jesus, Jesus just stay? Why did he have to go to come back? We had to go change clothes or something? Is that what it was? Well, I'm going to go. You know, it's expedient that I go away because if I don't go away, then I can't come back. And if I don't come back, you know, then I can't come again. But if I depart, then I'll come back. But wouldn't it be easier just to stay? Wouldn't it be easier just to stick around? See? And so when you're, when you're, looking, when you're looking at the, at the Bible, you start realizing all the... Uh, uh, Problems that men's doctrines bring about, then you ought to start saying, you know what? I, I really, uh, 
I really need to reconsider whether I want to believe this, this doctrine. Here's one more. Here's one more. I think we get this one more in here. Uh, this idea of one in the Godhead, oneness, you know, one person in the Godhead, it makes Jesus without honor. Now, last week we talked about how it made Jesus of none effect. It just took him out of the picture. But look at this. In John 8, 54, Jesus said, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. John 8 and verse 54. John 8, 54. He said, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me. Of whom ye say that he is your God. Now, wait a minute. If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. But yet... Since my father and I are one, I'm really honoring myself. If I honor myself, my honor's nothing. But my father and I are one, and therefore I'm going to honor myself. See the problem? Jesus cannot be the same person as the father, otherwise he is honoring himself. He is honoring himself if he's the same person. And I, I, I don't think that's the case. You know? Was Jesus honored? Was he honored of the Father? If he was honored of the Father, then the Father and Jesus cannot be the same. If they were the same, then you've taken away the honor of Christ. Now, friends, I, I'm trying to help you see. I'm trying to help you see the problems that, that men have when they don't rightly divide the word of truth, when they don't rightly divide the scriptures. All right? So we're talking about the Godhead, three different persons in the Godhead, three different persons in the divine nature. They all possess the divine nature, yet they are one in purpose, and they are one in the sense of there's none other that possess this divine nature. Now, the caller last week called in, and we talked about this verse uh, briefly. We'll put it up here again. John 5, verse 7, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. How is it that they're one? How is it they're one? They're one in agreement. They're one in purpose. And they're one in the sense of there is none other gods that possess the same nature that they do. Look at the next verse. There are, there are three that bear witness in the earth. The uh, the spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. All right? So we're talking about one in agreement, one in purpose, one in unity. Friends, that is really our goal. Our goal is to have unity and agreement. You know, a lot of times people say, well, y'all just, y'all just want to uh, uh, antagonize and, and provoke people, and, you know, y'all just, y'all just need to leave people alone. No, friends. The reason why we talk about problems and we talk about the things that divide us religiously because we want unity. Jesus said this, and this is the verse we're going to close with, John 17 and verse 20. Jesus said, he said, Neither I pray for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that, we may, that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou sent me. Jesus and his Father were one in unity. And that's what, their, that's what his uh, desire for us is. And that's what we're trying to accomplish by talking about these doctrines that divide us and keep us apart. Friends, we're out of time. Hope this has been beneficial to you. If you'd like a DVD, just give me a call or write me at word from the Lord at gmail.com. Till next time, friends, always remember to ask, what does the Bible say? You know, always get a word from the Lord. Have a good night. Of Pennsylvania County. That included a tornado warning for northwestern uh, Halifax County. That's long gone now. But it's been a, it's, you all have seen some really rocky weather over the last little bit. It's been really busy here, Mark, across Southside. Early around 4.45 p.m., National Weather, uh, National Weather Service out of Blacksburg issued a tornado warning uh, for northern Pennsylvania County, and that system was moving due east. Uh, 
towards Halifax County. A short time later, Halifax County was issued a tornado warning because Doppler radar has, has been picking up rotation from these storm cells that have been moving across the region. Mm -hmm. 